Hello peeps, welcome to my third tutorial. Now the first couple of tutorials, which you may or may not have seen, uh, cover the very basics such as looking around the work area, explaining some of these options we have available, bringing in some media and looking at layers. Now you're feeling a bit more comfortable with the workspace, we can actually uh, get a bit more exciting and try some animation. So with that in mind, what's uh, the best way to go about this? Well, understanding keyframes. What are keyframes? Well, keyframes have been used in animation for as long as animation has existed since uh, the Disney days and long before that. Keyframes are essentially what an animator uses to indicate key points within an animation. Now, in the good old heyday of that 2D pencil-drawn animation, that would involve the lead animator drawing keyframes such as a vital expression or a certain pose within a walk or a dance and he would do that for a sequence maybe for every 10 frames he would add a keyframe and then that would get passed down the line to animators under him that would fill in the gaps effectively or the in-betweens some people call it tweens or tweening um, now, whatever works for you, you can call it whatever you like. It's really understanding the basic concept that's important here. Okay, so we know what keyframes are now. Why are they important to us? Well, they're important to us in After Effects because we can use them in exactly the same way as animators use them in traditional pencil drawn animation. We can tell After Effects that this is a keyframe this is an important moment in our animation, we can then assign another keyframe and After Effects will do all the hard work and fill in the gaps in between. Uh, the best way I think is just to show you a very quick example actually. I've got this football again, it's from the last tutorial, it's, uh, I know it's not very sexy but it will do fine with regards to explaining this to you. So one of the most common things you're going to be doing in After Effects or you will need to be doing is animating the position of an object. Now this object could be anything, it could be a cloud in the sky, a vehicle, you name it, anything you can imagine, um, that's what it could be. Now I'm just going to use this football. So let's say we want it to be off screen to the left and we want to animate it going right across the screen to the right. It's very simple to do, let me show you how. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to tell After Effects the starting position or the first keyframe for this very short simple animation. So just grab the ball, hold the left mouse button, put it off screen. Obviously, like, remember this could be anything, this is just an example. So I'm going to put the ball off screen to the left. Now, how do I tell After Effects that this is the first keyframe? It's very easy. If we go down here, in fact, let me close this because I didn't show you what you need to do to open this. Now we've got the football keyframe here. Let me just press enter and quickly rename that football. Sorry, the football layer, I mean, not the football keyframe. So we've got that highlighted. If you look just here, you've got a small arrow. If you click on that, that's going to open some basic attributes for the football layer. Now it's got anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity. These are the initial basic options it gives you and these are things we can animate over time. Now there's literally hundreds of things that can be animated, lots of different properties. These are the basic things. This list can be very long if you want it to be. And that's really the power of After Effects. You can animate almost any attribute to, uh, with a layer or an object and you can assign different keyframes for different moments in time. Um, I mean, it really can boggle your mind if you think about it too much. I mean, that's the beauty of it as well. Pretty much anything you can imagine uh, you can accomplish with animating it within After Effects. It's just a case of how you go about it and having a nice solid plan for doing it. So in this case, we're animating the position so if you click, just uh, just to the left of these, you've got the stopwatches. Now this is how you open the first keyframe. If I click on position, there you go. Now if you look just over here, you've got a small diamond has appeared on this. This is the timeline. As you can see, it goes from 0 seconds at the top to 10 seconds over here on the right. Now, the actual overall length of my animation at the moment is 40 seconds. Um, that's purely because up in the composition settings, if you look here, I've got 40 seconds as the duration of the animation. I could change that now to anything I want, 30, press OK, and there you go, it's updated that. Um, this work area uh, bar here 
will define the actual length of the animation when I render it out. So I've just set it to 10 seconds here, um, just because that's all we need for the time being. So this yellow diamond here is the first keyframe, which is telling After Effects that the position for the ball at that point in time, which is zero seconds, is just off screen to the left. So how do I tell After Effects that I want it to be over on this side of the screen after a certain duration of time? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Grab the scrub, this is called the scrubber, um, you can call it whatever you like. Uh, you scrub across to where you like. So let's say in eight seconds time, which is there, I now want the ball to be over here. So grab the ball. And you can see there's a line now going from the first keyframe. Now I want it to move horizontally across the screen to here for that eight second marker. So a bit like scaling up and down, hold shift and that will constrain it. I can't move it up and down now. If I let go of shift, you can, I can move it anywhere. If I hold shift, it constrains the movement to a horizontal. That can be done for diagonal and vertical movement as well. So let's put it just off screen here and let go. And as you can see down here, another yellow diamond has appeared. That's our second keyframe. So we can see at zero seconds, we have the ball off to the left. And at eight seconds, we have the ball off to the right. So all we've really done is given two commands to After Effects, and it's gonna fill in all the frames in the middle. Let me run a quick, quick preview um, render, and you'll see the ball moving across the screen. I'll just press space to get it to do that, by the way. And there we go. It's not going to set the world on fire. I don't think uh, Pixar are going to be phoning me about that one. But I've made uh, I've made the point, and you can see how easy it is to set up two keyframes. Okay, so we've now set a couple of keyframes and got a very basic animation. Again, I'm just pressing space there so that you can preview the ball going across the screen. Space again to stop it. I've also got at the top right the option in the preview panel up here um, to quickly scrub through it, go back to the start and play. Now this will keep looping every 10 seconds just as a preview. There you go. So let's say I just want to edit this. Uh, let's assume I don't want it to take eight seconds to travel across the screen. It looks a tad too long. How can I make that quicker? Well, the quickest and easiest way to do that would be to grab this second keyframe. Remember that represents the second position at eight seconds and simply move it along the timeline to four seconds. There you go, you can see it as I move it, it's updating in the screen at the top, uh, showing you where it's gonna be at that point in time. So if I now go back to the start, that should go across the screen at twice the speed roughly, because obviously I've halved the time it's going to take to get there. That's one of the very quick ways of updating keyframes on the fly. You can also grab them manually up here, if you hold left quick, uh, left click, sorry, and you can see that I'm actually manually moving the position of this keyframe. Now this isn't moving the time of it, this is moving the, the first position. As you can see down at the bottom here, this is still on zero seconds. So this is gonna be at zero seconds where the ball is going to start. So let's place it up here off screen. I can zoom out a little bit. It, once, when you're on this screen, the mouse will, uh, you can scroll in and out as much as you like. Um, to get the view that you're comfortable with. You can also click the middle mouse button to move it around to see any way you're happy with. So let's move the second keyframe down to just off screen here. And then let me just get it in position, scrub to zero, press space. And then you can see uh, we've pretty easily just moved those two keyframes. And we've now got the ball going from top left to bottom right across the screen. So let me just move those back quickly. It's very simple again. I'm gonna get roughly horizontal. Um, for the sake of this demonstration, it really doesn't have to be exact, so that's gonna do just fine. Now, what else can we animate? Well, like I said, we can animate anything we want. Let's get the ball rotating as it moves across the screen so that it looks vaguely like a football rolling across the screen. Um, it's not gonna look amazing, but this will display to you how to use keyframes. And that's the main thing we're trying to achieve here. So we're back at the zero seconds position. Now to open the keyframe, remember, we just click this stopwatch. So we've got rotation here. Let's just click it. And now that's set a keyframe just under the first keyframe on zero seconds. Now, if we scrub right over to 
this keyframe here on four seconds because that's uh, basically the end of our animation at the moment. Now you can hold shift again that will constrain this this hit right here. If I'm not holding shift you see I can move anywhere. If I hold shift it starts to lock just there. It locks to that. This is really handy for lining up different types of animation and sequences later on when you've got a lot going on. Um, on the timeline holding shift will constrain things and lock you in certain positions let go of shift you can go wherever you want hold shift you're going to start locking into different positions really useful to know a little bit later on so for the position let's call it position b which is over at four seconds i can click here and tell after effects that i want the ball to have rotated twice by the time it gets there now let's have a look what that looks like it's probably going to look pretty rubbish but as with a lot of animation, yeah, it's not so bad. It looks roughly like a ball rolling across the screen. Um, as with a lot of animation, there's a lot of try. Let me shorten this just down to here so I don't have to keep restarting it. There's a lot of trial and error in general with animation. Obviously, there's many fundamental techniques you can stick to. But as with drawing a picture, you get a feel for it. Um, I mean, for instance, if this was a real ball rolling along, the shadow wouldn't be rolling along with the ball. You know, the shadow <laughs> it actually looks really bad. But for the purpose of this demonstration, um, you can see what I mean. I could also animate the scale on this football if I wanted to. So let's put the marker back at position one. And let me click scale. Let me move back to the second position. Again, I'll just hold shift to lock it so that I know it's going to match up with those keyframes. Now, let me just, I can grab this, hold shift to constrain the scale again. And let's just go make it ridiculously big. And uh, let's go back to the start. I can move that back there, press space. And as it goes, it's going to roll and get bigger as it goes across the screen. Let me just click on the background so it doesn't have the bounding box around it. There you go, press space. There you go, you've got a ball rolling across the screen, not looking fantastic, but you know, we had a static picture of a 2D ball and it's now got a bit of movement to it. Um, I think that, you know, that explains the basics. Within about five minutes, we've set up three different types of keyframes for three different attributes, rotation, scale, and position. Obviously, this list can grow and grow and grow. You can animate any effect within After Effects as well. So that, well, that could be the glow of an effect, the colour, um, many different things. The list is endless and the best way to learn it is by going through different attributes. Now I think in the next tutorial we're actually going to do a small project which will will make a small intro animation very similar to the one that I used at the start of this tutorial actually. So I'll take some text, I'll be showing you from beginning to end to how to animate that text in quite a nice dynamic way using keyframes much like we've learnt here that we'll go into a bit more depth. We'll use easing as well and I'll use that tutorial to explain the importance of easing and to get nice smooth animation and we'll also be having a look at motion blur. See you then.